Hey, welcome everyone. This is Jeremy Osterberger with BIC Magazine. Today I'm joined by Chris Ferreira, CEO and founder of US Fire Pump. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for offering some of your time to us today. Thanks, Jeremy. Glad to be here with you. Always good to catch up. So, Chris, man, growing up in Louisiana, I'm real familiar with uh, Ferreira Fire Apparatus, FFA, and, and a little bit about your background. But hey, for folks that don't know you, Chris, tell us a little bit about your background and, and give us a little history on, on what led you to launch U.S. Fire Pump. You know, let, let's just go back in time, uh, Jeremy. You know, born and raised in Baton Rouge, uh, grew up in uh, North Baton Rouge, went to Redemptress High School and, and uh Believe it or not, following my dad's footsteps and, and joined the local Union 198 as a, a pipe fitter welder. So I did that, went to apprenticeship school at night and worked at the different plants and industry, uh, you know, up and down the river, you know, for, for a few years. And me and my wife got married and moved to uh, North Baton Rouge in, in Central. And um, I knew a couple of guys that worked at Exxon with me that was on the fire department. And so, you know, why don't you come join? So I joined the Central Volunteer Fire Department back in, uh, shoot, 1978. Um, and in turn, back then, you know, the, a lot of the fire departments, and especially around the state, was always funded by, you know, chicken dinners, bingo. I mean, there was no tax base. I mean, everything was door-to-door -door donations, and we really needed a new fire truck. So, you know, with my welding experience and pipe fitter experience. So me and a couple of guys got together, believe it or not, and built a fire truck in our spare time for the fire department. We saved a lot of money. So, you know, in doing that and, and looking at the research and buying a lot of the small parts to make this thing work, it just, I felt there was a need and, and uh, it seemed like I've always worked all my life and, and I always wanted to go in business for myself. So, I, you know, with my wife working, I jumped in with both feet, so to speak. It starts selling miscellaneous fire equipment. And then one thing led to another. And I started repping, you know, some other brands of fire trucks. And then I said, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to go to a lot of their facilities all around the country. And I said, well, shoot, I can do anything those guys can do. So I started manufacturing fire trucks um, on Mammoth Drive uh, in Baton Rouge, you know, and that was, uh, it started around 1982, you know, so it's been really a uh, interesting career. So as, as a evolution, took place, you know, we outgrew that facility and in about 1994, we expanded that facility uh, one of the last times and actually moved to our new facility that we uh, so well exposed on Interstate 12 in, in the big town of Holon, Louisiana and, and started uh, growing the business even more and then in turn you know, we, we, uh, we built while I was there uh, at Ferrer, you know, we built in excess of 6,000 fire trucks and really had customers all around the world. You know, it was really uh, amazing to uh, develop so many relationships with, you know, customers from, shoot, Dubai, Turkey, Canada, Mexico, and just domestically. You know, I had, I had trucks uh, from New York City to San Francisco to Houston and just about every major city across the country. So, um, a few years back, uh, around 2017, we had an opportunity to exit that business. There was a publicly traded company that came in to, uh, uh, had to have the business. So as you can appreciate, you know, you look at life and say, well, you know, is it time to step back or whatever? And, and um, so I took, took advantage of that opportunity and, and sold for air fire apparatus. And then in turn, in parallel, behind the scenes, I had started U.S. Fire Pump. So I really wanted to design a fire pump that would be the largest fire pump installed on a fire truck anywhere in the world. Uh, so currently, I hold the World Book of Guinness uh, record for the largest fire pump ever installed on a fire truck that actually flows in excess of 6,000 gallons a minute from draft. From a pressurized source, we can do over 10,000 gallons a minute, you know, so something crazy, but industry, you know, really needs that and, and their ability to fight all these large fires. And, you know, it's a pretty simple analogy, you know, big fires take big water and big equipment, you know, so uh, that's why I wanted to start U.S. Fire Pump. And, and I really couldn't stay home and do anything. I, you know, I've always been active all my life and you can only fish for so many days and I don't play golf. And so I just decided to jump in with both feet and start another company, you know, so that that's where we're at today. 
Yeah, Chris, uh, there can't be too many people that can say they've uh, handmade a fire truck. So it's, it's a pretty No, you know, and I talk about that, Jeremy, all the time, really only in America. You know, I started that business and people think I'm crazy. I started Ferrer Fire Apparatus with only $1,800. Can you believe that? You know, so, you know, I didn't come from a wealthy family or anything. So it was just a lot of hard work and, you know, hired a lot of great people along the way to make it happen. And, and that's what it took. So. Yeah, I'm going to get to that, Chris, and I'm going to do some of the great people that uh, we know you surround yourself with. With so, so let's get into some news here. A new facility in Mont Bellevue opened up recently. Tell us about this investment and, and what does that new facility mean for your capabilities in the Texas area? Well, you know, a lot of people don't know exactly what we do. Not only do we manufacture fire pumps, but the majority of our business is industrial firefighting. Mm -hmm. So currently today, we're the largest emergency response company anywhere in the world. You know, we have actively put out every major fire in the last five years around the country from the Deer Park fire that was uh, one of the largest fires in Texas, Texas history back in 2019 to the uh, aircraft carrier for the Navy um, back about a year and a half ago uh, to the Rockton fire up in, in Illinois. And, and we've been really all over the place. So if there's any major incident or any major fire We've been contracted to, to uh, go extinguish the fire. We just have built a great name for ourselves, uh, you know, great safety team, a great experience team. And it just, uh, what really sets us apart from, from anybody else out there, number one, is just the sheer volume of equipment that we have. But beyond that, it's just a tremendous amount of knowledge that our people have to, uh, to do this job. Let's get into some more of those applications, Chris, you know, as far as uh, what, you can, what you can provide and U.S. Fire Pump can provide for facilities and, and what separates U.S. Fire Pump's equipment and service and, and really knowledge from maybe regular fire fleet service companies. Well, you know, it's, it's, like I said earlier, you know, you know, all these large incidents and large, especially these large fires, you know, take big water, you know, big foam solution uh, metering and to extinguish and, and really it takes the techniques to know how to do all this but again what separates us is we have invested a tremendous amount of money in equipment uh, you know we talked about the new mount bellevue office which we had an open house back in march that we have invested you know probably 15 million dollars there of equipment and support equipment and and trucks and monitors and foam stores to, to really everything to respond to any major incident, uh, you know, out that way, especially, and uh, really, uh, you know, across the country. So, you know, it's about investing back into the company, you know, developing those relationships and, uh, and doing the right thing. And, and, you know, not to brag, we've been very successful in what we do. And, and uh, it's, it's been really uh, rewarding to uh, see how we've grown so fast in this industry uh, but, you know, people believe in us and, and we have close relationships with, you know, a lot of customers. Yeah, you know, Chris, and I wanted to highlight a specific uh, situation you guys were involved in, you know, back in 2019, the ITC fire in Deer Park, uh, you know, that put a big national spotlight on Houston and caused a lot of facilities to reevaluate their emergency response plans. You know, Chris, tell us about U.S. Fire Pump's lessons learned from that event, you know, and how has the approach changed or how has the approach been impacted since that event? Well, you know, that was one of the largest fires in Texas history. You know, we actually had 14 storage tanks on fire. We were the only company, uh, contract company to come in to extinguish that fire. Uh, but back up to your question, you know, the lessons that we've learned is, you know, the old saying by a friend of mine, Jared Kraft, who used to be the chief at Exxon uh, here in Baton Rouge, he always would say, you know, you need to make your friends before you need them. So, you know, by that comment is, you know, no one industry has the equipment that, to put out a massive fire like that. So you need resources from a lot of different uh, companies and facilities and friends. And, and so we were contracted to, to go out there to extinguish that fire. Um, you know, the lessons learned is just, um, you know, had we been called earlier, you know, we could have probably made a bigger difference, uh, a quicker difference than what the, uh, the outcome was. But, um, you know, we were really proud to be there. We really, uh, uh, once we got set up, we had the fire on the, under control in several hours. And, and uh, but, you know, back, it's back to the techniques and, and the personnel and the equipment that we have, so. 
And some of that equipment, Chris, anything you want to highlight, you know, um, maybe some folks don't know about a specific piece of equipment. What, what's come out in the last maybe year or so that folks really need to know about? Well, you know, first of all, when we talk of a big water flow, I mean, you know, it, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, the water needs and the foam supply that, that we do on all these major jobs, I mean, we're not hooking into a hydrant. We always looking for alternative water sources. So, you know, it's not uncommon on some of these large responses that we're flowing 30 or 40,000 gallons a minute through 12 inch hose. So we have brought new technology to our industry uh, by developing big submersible pumps where we drop these hydraulic submersible pumps in ponds or rivers to get alternative water sources. So it's not uncommon for us to go on a big job and lay four miles of 12 inch hose on the ground to a water supply or a, um, a, a water outlet that we can get water. So, uh, you know, you need all of this type of equipment, you know, to extinguish the fire, but the technology that we bring, you know, not only from uh, large submersible pumps, but it's the foam supply, uh, what we call a direct foam injection system that is metered foam uh, electronically and by uh, very uh, precise paddle wheels that are designed into the system. In addition to that, you know, we've actually, you know, a lot of people don't know, in addition, uh, in addition to firefighting, we also do pump rentals, you know, for backup fire water pumps and, and put in a temporary fire water ring in these industrial facilities if their fire pump goes down. But we went one step further, you know, we were challenged by, you know, the typical standby fire pump in the in industry, you know, reads water pressure and, and to kick the fire pump on and so to do that from a mobile standpoint, got to be challenged. So we developed some electronics where, whereby we can draft water through these submersible pumps into a boost pump and kick these pumps on when pressure is required in these facilities. So, you know, it's new electronics that, uh, you know, we call it a little smart system that we've developed in, in pumping capacity. So there's things that we've done and brought, like I said, new uh, ideas and new technology to our industry. So. No, that's uh, neat, Chris. Thanks for explaining some of that uh, smart technology. So, uh, Chris, let's pull out the crystal ball for a second, look into the future. You know, where is U.S. Fire Pump headed and, and what can the market expect to see from U.S. Fire Pump in the future? Well, you know, the crystal ball is, is, is always my uh, suggestion is really, you know, the sky's the limit in any business. You know, it's just whatever you put into it, it's going to be what you get out of it, so to speak. And, and you know, we're always looking for new opportunities and new ways and, and new technology, and we have invested money to that. But uh, back to your question, you know, but not only, uh, real quick, not only do we do, you know, industrial firefighting, we also have a big potable water division that, you know, when hurricanes come in that, you know, to support drinking water to uh, a lot of these sites uh, around South Louisiana, around really anywhere, anybody needs drinking water. We have a division that supports that and, and, you know, with generators and restaurants. I mean, we have a whole host of emergency response, you know, equipment, but back to your question again, where, where are we going? I mean, you know, expanding the business even more, you know, open up new locations and other parts of the, the country or the world possibly. Um, so again, the sky's the limit. I mean, uh, you know, with the, with the great uh, response that we've been having and, and the support uh, through industry, um, you know, we're, you know, I like to analyze, you know, a lot of these situations that we're going to help solve your problem. So, you know, my, my goal is to go in a, a, a emergency situation and help solve that problem. I, yeah. I want to help. I want to help take your problem away, you know, so. I like it. So, Chris, let's let's take our discussion uh, to a more personal place. You know, in the in the limited time that I've spent with you and your team, relationships matter. You know, some of the most recognized names in the emergency response business have contributed, you know, to the success of U.S. Fire Pump. You know, um, talk a little bit about that, and maybe what's been the most pivotal moment of your career? If you can single that down, I'm, I'm unsure. But uh, any thoughts on well, that? Well, you know, I, I guess the pivotal point is back back to the fire truck days. You know, when when uh, as you can appreciate it, it takes a lot of money to to do this, and it took a lot of money back there to to do that. And you know, back in 1988, we reached a point that basically we were just out of I mean, we were leveraged out out of money. So. 
there was a banker friend uh, of mine that I developed a relationship in, in uh, Baton Rouge. His name was Dougley McKelvin with Guarantee Bank. So, that, you know, we couldn't borrow no more money. And so he got creative and we did an SBA loan in 1988 uh, that really leapfrogged us. So I guess that was a moment of time that, you know, you reach that wall and you got to do something one way or the other. And I guess that was one of the walls that we overcame by, um, you know, getting additional money to uh, expand the business. But I got to tell you, back in those days uh, in banking relations, and uh, it's not like it is today. I mean, the SBA loan officer was located in New Orleans. So we actually drove down to New Orleans to meet with them. So it was it was uh, something very unique in those days, you know, so. I love it. So, uh, Chris, one last question before we uh, roll out of here. You know, look, you mentioned fishing. Uh, I know a little bit about your hobbies. Uh, tell me, tell me though, if there were any other job you would have, what would it be, Chris? What would you be doing? Man, I love this job where we at. I mean, I have the passion. I mean, this is an exciting job. I guess when you look at fire trucks, that was exciting. I mean, you know, this is this is more exciting to me. I mean, being a fireman for so many years that. You know, I started my career as a volunteer fireman. So, I mean, I'm happy doing, you know, I wouldn't have any other job, you know, doing what I'm doing now. Uh, you know, um, I got great personnel. You know, you always surround yourself from, with, with the great people out there. And, and we just have a depth of personnel that really uh, makes it happen from, you know, from anything, from uh, the janitor to the, you know, the engineers to purchase, just get everybody. I mean, every, we just got a great team. And, and again, to be successful, uh, and I talk about that from time to time, to be successful, you know, uh, first of all, you never give up. And again, the second, you got to surround yourself with great people, you know, so, and, and also, uh, as Johnny would know, I mean, I'm a firm believer of leading by example. I mean, you know, whatever, you know, I'll get out there and work with the guys, you know, in the shop floor, if that's what it takes, you know, so. Yeah. Hello, Chris. Well, look, Chris, I appreciate you hanging out with us. It's been fun getting to spend a little time together and uh, let's wrap this interview up, but uh, more in the future. Just thank you so much for talking a little emergency response with Big Magazine today. Thanks, Jeremy. And for those interested in learning more about uh, U.S. Fire Pump, visit usfirepump.com. Hey, as always, we are most grateful for our audience. Please like and share this recording with colleagues. And for more industry news, videos, webinars, and podcasts, visit bicmagazine.com. Remember, everybody, it's what we do together that counts.